Okay, I was terrible. My heart for a second. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was like, oh no, <laughs> which one? Because the veto definitely said Dust 2. But we're here on Dust 2, a little bit of a, you know, a, a bait there, of course, just to make me skip a beat uh, with the Mirage 5. through. <laughs> we're here on Dust 2, made in Brazil, on that CT side. Everything I was expected. Mm -hmm. This is weird. His error is going to say, yo, B-Tunnels is clear, guys. <laughs> but it's not. We are going to get some action. Oh, but she doesn't expect? full send. Oh. oh, she's not sure. Oh, oh, she. Oh, what a shot. Looking for a little more. And an exo going to rip her head right around the corner. So it's gotten kind of strange here. Information still somewhat lacking. Not quite sure if this is the entire team or not. Fly with a nice one around the corner, but two quick kills coming in. Oh, little Z. That is unfortunate. You know, it's difficult round that smoke, of course, but. Into the three versus two now. Bomb finally makes his way towards B, as this has been such a weird round so far. There is a kit available. No utility off the back of it, though. So, going to be tough. And the B bomb side does too. It's quite hard to retake, especially with no utility at all. So, we'll see here. Comes down to the headies, right? This USP is going to have to pop off, and they are very apprehensive. You can see they've got plenty of time to play with, trying to peek in together. Little Z finds her frag, but traded out quickly. Easier here, uh, rocking a hard place, right? They're on both sides of her, finds the first, but there's the trade. Very well played from QSC in the 2v1. And uh, MIBR, you got to feel for him because it is a wacky round to deal with. <laughs> this is the kind of round that I want to see from QSC over and over and over again. Not necessarily the same really weird push towards B, but just the coordination, the beautiful flash that comes out that allows them to get those two kills to push in onto the B sites and how they're swinging together and covering each other's angles to make sure that they can get the, the last player on the site. That's what we've been needing to see from QSE and it gives them the huge opportunity that they've needed. But now <laughs> that very aggressive team that we've been expecting definitely comes into play here as they start high tailing it up the A long. Oh, dangerous. It's so very dangerous, especially with no pressure from short or mid at all. Yeah, into Deagles, into a scout. This really looks scary to me. They've already picked up a kill for very little. Boost over the smoke. Gap there as well. They will eventually sort that out. So, starving information, allowing for a bit of a cross to come in. Is here at the back end of the site, hidden away. And that boost still in play. High flash comes in. Pretty obvious. So they're all good to turn away from it. Working off of each other pretty well here. Babs hitting a good couple of shots. Needs a little more than this. Will indeed continue to add to the tally. So looking very good. Three versus two. On above comes Katty. And now just Hera on that backside. So it looks like disaster has been averted. He said. Uh. Uh, <laughs> uh, so far, sorry about the one kill on the caster curse, but... If it goes any deeper than this, might have to answer a few questions. <laughs> uh, looking a... for the headshot angles. I mean, Hera gets unfortunate on that. Molly coming in, I think. She's still trying. I mean, you got to kind of go for it, right? The potential is there. You absolutely have to. Or give it a shot. Narrowly missing out on the opportunity, but eventually just gets crunched. It, it's quite close, though. We talk about the expense and everything. Um, again, QSC maybe wanted it a bit cleaner than that. This one here, they absolutely can't lose a player, if you ask me. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I think that, I, I mean, I was really worried towards the middle of that round because they stall out for so long and they're stuck. They can't retreat very often you'll see, obviously, teams will kind of posture a little bit this way and that way before actually committing so that they have the opportunity to change their mind if they want to. Yeah, QAC just kind of full send it down A. They haven't given themselves proper control and they wind up just stuck in A long, in a couple of smokes. And, you know, MIBR are just kind of waiting for the smokes to clear so that they can get sight lines. Um, and so I was a little concerned there. I thought that QSE were going to kind of fumble the ball a little bit, but they do manage to come out on top of it, which I think is a really important um, change. Maybe not a change so much, but we're seeing 
better communication clearly and better synergy between the players to make sure that they have each other covered. I think that round is a really good example of working well in an unfavorable position to kind of keep control. And of course, we have to bear in mind that they were favored in terms of what weaponry they had available to them and as they still are coming into this round. So we talk about that momentum. Now it's started. This is the first time they've managed to string more than one round in a row. And that in and of itself is important. Yeah, quite quite the start as well to really throw out there. So yeah. um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Just to maybe just hand itself to a bit more speed as well. Kind of like Vertigo. And as mentioned, as we've been pushing, I think QSC is a squad. Um, really happy to be here and, and get their T side out a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. B stack doesn't really work. Made in Brazil. Try and make their way over. Ooh, can't be. That's a little awkward. Maybe would have wanted one more out of that. The protection, the uh, tradage is here. And just going to be down to Kizia. As I said. Didn't really want to take any damage in this round with just a couple deagles dotted in there, so might be kicking themselves ever so slightly. <laughs> Flying Mac 10 around the corner is always uh, nasty to be on the end of. But first rifle round coming in, this is where it really gets important, right? Lil Z uh, popping off on Vertigo or Pal. Want to see that again? And I think QSC need to be ready for it. Yeah, I mean, she's taking, I mean, she's just jumping straight into this. Buying into that AWP so early on. But I mean, we, as you mentioned, we saw her doing phenomenal work with it on Vertigo. So looking to try and make a repeat of that. This time around, however, QSC, they realize that they can't afford to do the same wonky plays they've been doing before. So a little bit more of a, a set default. As they're posturing towards B, they're trying to give themselves the opportunity to shut down uh, a site that's slightly more difficult to retake on. Oh, but it could be a little bit of a fake. Very slow, prodding and poking. Mm -hmm. Oh, QSE, Ooh. hello. We a player in the pit seems to have worked out, but uh, going towards B, not, you know, coming away from the idea. Hera good for one. Damage onto a second. At the very least, the kill in towards pit. You know, it's drawn the CTs away, and now they are trapped in between both sides of the attack this is so very weird though yeah if you start taking players <laughs> down on the back side the front becomes a bit more vulnerable and vice versa if they want to go for it quick flank in from the tunnels here's you're gonna catch cat you're not even you know hidden away and ready for that in towards platform and now oh anna x again from behind looking good trying her best to save the round his yet holding away, doesn't have a kick, could have gone for it, but wins the fight. The all important fight for MIBR. QSC, I think they will be kicking themselves a little bit there. That was rough. I mean, Annex does so much to try and maintain control of the site. And so they managed to get kills on either side of the map. They push in towards B. But what I like about MIBR's response is they don't all try to funnel in from the same direction. They send a flank all the way up through B long to make sure that they have you know more than one angle covered so it makes a huge difference so as much as QSC have set in a flank of their own first of all they take or they it takes them longer to get into position because they are so far away and by the time they get there most of their forces have been run down so this was actually a really good play from MIBR uh, to not over rotate early on but once they have the information rotate quickly and then send out that flank to make sure that they have more than one angle covered So QSC once again, same kind of default here. Everybody spread out, looking for a gap to show itself. Or oh, awkward on the flash, but no one around really in the middle here. So should be all good. Getting the pressure up towards shorts. And uh, this is how a lot of rounds end on the T side of Dust 2 with people up short. There is uh, the trickle smokes, which are pretty nasty. Curious to see if that's what we're going to get. Yep. <laughs> it's almost as though 
I watch CS for a living. <laughs> um, <laughs> but all the same, what are they going to do with it? It looks more like a mid to B. That could just be a mid to A. No, surely not after you dump so much util onto the A side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to run straight over onto B. A little bit of a fake on A and oh, getting left alone to try and stop the cavalry from coming in. Oh my goodness, what is going on? There's so much team damage. There's a team kill as well from QSE. So uh, making it hard for themselves. They all just fly in through window, really. 2v2. Again, as I've mentioned, very, very hard bomb site to retake oh, no. a touchdown nade onto the low HP late, though, is certainly one way to do it. Cat, you going to be spotted here and can't find a single frag. MIBR keeping it together. Once again, it gets kind of chaotic. Um, it, it definitely is a, a solid play, I think, right? So you go for the trickle smokes. You go for... Um, you you kind of need a, a CT smoke in there because they dropped Anna X down, right, to then try and push in behind the player that's playing mid. But it's all it's all a bit weird because MIBR, they weren't playing anyone mid, right? Uh, so maybe you hold off for those rotations as we saw Anna X do. But you've not got the CT smoke. So it's not necessarily like pressure that there can be someone in the drop down. More the fact that you just have to take these straight up fights. So the idea, the theory is there. The execution still needs a bit of tweaking on that particular play from QSE. I thought it was a little bit rough as well for Anna X to be trying to stop three people on her own from mm -hmm. rotating towards A. And she does fairly well to at least slow them down a little bit and gets a, I think she gets a one pick um, in that engagement. And so it boils down to the two versus two. But yeah, really rough one for QSE to hold on to once they get in onto B. Yeah, and now on the half by trying to make some waves mm -hmm. over at long. Just not going to happen, right? You, you don't quite have the weaponry, the utility. They're set up and ready for it. A, a little bit um, of a misstep here. The all mm -hmm. fallen and pressure now on Kizia. We'll manage to find the two things. So looking good, staying alive. That A1S, it does relatively well in these types of scenarios. Allows you to stay cool. That lower fire rate, there's less the likeliness of you, you know, messing up a, a tough spray down. Um, and they do manage to recover the alt back, but could have got a bit weird there for a second. So nice hold in from the pit, making it look easy. And that's what we like. What I've really enjoyed is that, so we kind of highlighted that was a potential star player and then Lake, uh, sorry, little Z came up really big in the previous map, but this time around it's Fakiza who's come out on top. And I love that they're, this is a team that clearly doesn't lean on one star player. There is, everybody has the potential to perform incredibly well. And MIBR, I mean, they're leaning into that so well and it's paying off. Ooh, that's, that's rough for me. I think, you know, Kizzy gets one, but takes a lot of damage for her trouble. Three versus three, we always say as well, even trade's going to benefit that T side. And you can see why it leaves certain areas of the map vulnerable on the defense. And at the minute, that's B. And as this smoke goes down, I think Anna X is going to... Um, okay, maybe not. I was going to say fully push in and, you know, go on this lurk. As it happens, another smoke comes in. You've also now, because they've, you know, spent a bit of time picking up information, you've also now got someone solidly ready on B. So that window of opportunity that we could see has now closed. And I think it becomes a bit scarier. What's really... I think it's scary is the fact that, there you go, they have a huge advantage. One person on a sliver of HP, take them down, but the orc is still up and they don't have any real util. I think that's the last smoke that's going to come through. Yeah, kind of rough. Smoke's, smoke's got to go down ahead of time. Really, Ooh. little Z trying to get cheeky as one player planting that bomb, of course, means there's no protection for the second. Can't capitalize. And this could be rough. The orc moving into B is really not easy. Kit's available, half HP for Fly. They are gonna send it. A lot of damage taken, but Fly no. finds a frag. Little Z with the read as well. And they do, again, manage to pull it off kind of against the odds. Yeah, I think the fact that you say again, I mean, this is not the first time that we've seen this. I mean, QSE go into that, the end of that round with so much more 
that they can use. I think they still had the two smokes to throw down, so they cover a lot of those sidelines. And you, you talk about how trying to re move in on to be with the orb can be so difficult. But again, it's it's MIBR so well coordinated for a team that's relatively new together as a five stack they've been crazy coordinated and qse i think that that's been one of their biggest downfalls here where they haven't been able to match that level of coordination big tags coming through it's the frag that goes the way of qse to open up lil zeno with the potential you can see it in your mind's eye can't you to just wipe them all out Ooh. here Big flick across, easy one up close, and another race. No, nah. robbed by Arkinia. <laughs> Has to happen, of course, but a big 4K nonetheless, keeping it together under pressure. And again, really proving herself to be one of the players to watch here, MIBR. Solid hold, solid hold. Thanks to an individual, but you know, keeping it together. Mm -hmm. and, and once again, this is similar. The way Vertigo was going, this momentum is now behind them. It's a silly thing to notice, but uh, Little Z basically doubles her kills in one round. So, oh, beautiful! Takes a little bit of damage off of that, but I think very worth it to give yourself that little bit of an opportunity. Yeah, certainly. Working off the spawn, Babs. Going to be happy with that. So, they got to do something with it. Yeah, first yeah. time in a while they've had a solid advantage. I like the response here from MIBR. It is going to come down to the timing pretty nicely. They could drop the bomb if they play their cards right, and they will. Katty trying to find the trade. Oh, rough, low HP. Can't finish the frag. I think going to be a little tilted there, and the bomb completely isolated, right? The, the support, <laughs> the cavalry, as we say, is struggling to get around, so they might have to concede it. Fight's all over the shop right now, but MIBR somewhat in control it's it's very tough to say here sam who is <laughs> really uh coming out on top of these exchanges it's still so tough so now they start moving over towards a but they obviously have to take the lot are they just gonna no no they're going they're going i was like wondering if they were gonna try and save for a second but no it looks like they're actually gonna go for it which I wonder if it wouldn't be better to just try and hold on to these guns because economically it's a bit messy. They should still have the full loss bonus, but they just bought in this round. So it's, eh, it's up in the air. It's not great. It's not great. Yeah. Yeah. The, the jury is certainly out on that decision, but I think they'll be back pretty quick, to be honest with you. Um, it definitely is workable to rush up short. It's always rough saving on that T side. Maybe an AWP. I can facilitate, but I think in, in terms of evening out the economy, actually, uh, it's probably better to just let it happen. Um, <laughs> you know, so yeah, I could have had something a little bit here, but it, it offsets. If you've got the spare cash, then maybe not so bad, but with the fact that they just had very little to work with, right? Um, I think it could have screwed them if the hero AKs that possibly could have come into this round didn't work. So, um, they will go down, a little comically, but <laughs> we get to see the half bite coming out, and they're going to give this short attack another go. Trickle Smokes once again. Lil Z ready for that CT drop this time around. What's the game plan? Fly trying to find the heads. Will indeed manage to clap out late, but a lot of ground. That bomb in particular getting closer and closer to the site. They will eventually work it down. Oh, big no. jump shot coming in from Lil Z. They're going to drop the bomb. Oh, that? no. And now everybody's arrived to finish off the round. Just going to be one remaining here for QSC. A nice D gone to the second, but not going to be able to get anything else done. MIBR coming away with it. And it's it's <laughs> rough. I was questioning, usually the way that you set up, especially if you read on to the economy, you'd have the orc holding from where Fly is here, but who needs an AWP <laughs> when you can hit heads? And, you know, who needs to use range when you can just shotgun it out? The disrespect, but honestly, I love it. And I'm also really enjoying seeing MIBR take this. We spoke about proactivity and how important that is. And I love that after the few rounds where QSE kind of rushed up A, they're not allowing that to happen. They kind of take the aggressive stance here and try and stem that tide. But QSE, of course, have been kind of posturing towards B for a lot of rounds. And B is fairly empty. But again, they, they kind of struggle to pull the trigger. 
You know, they, they posture for a little while and then maybe they lose a player early on and then they struggle to adapt, to stabilize once again, to make a decision. They stall out. I mean, now they haven't even lost the player and they have stalled a little bit. Okay, they are waiting for the bomb to rotate so that they can change direction. But it has been a bit of an issue where they get really hesitant, they stop moving, and then they get overrun. Well... I think we're going to see a burst in a second. Flash comes in. Two players ready and waiting in and around this pit area. One a bit more obvious. Doesn't get hard cleared. Flash effective, but it's a tough one to break apart now, right? There's a player in that pit as well, in and around the headshot angle. Difficult to flash off. They'll try their best to get in here. Big damage comes through. Bit of team damage as well. They'll win the fight eventually. Didn't quite cost them everything, but it cost them a fair amount. And again, like you say, they've, they've stagnated. What now, right? We got the kills. Uh, only one smoke for the cross. And they don't know what to do. Oh, and that's rough because there's a nice little flank coming in here. And they are somewhat aware of it. They are somewhat checking that angle, but they got to go. They finally, oh no, <laughs> the slight gap in the smoke. Thankfully, it's not a second, but not ideal as it's just going to be clean up. They do get that bomb down, so that's going to help a little bit. But that's, that's it. That's the end of it. Oh. Yeah. The, the issue is, you know, maybe you're talking it over. Maybe you're also like, right, we got to wait for this smoke to dissipate so we don't just go flying around the corner into an orb that's posted up or whatever. But I think you kind of have to take that risk. You find the two kills in towards long and, and you just have to send it, as they say, right? Um, that hesitation is, is ultimately uh, the downfall. And yeah, it's, it's becoming a bit of a problem. The indecisiveness really is, is causing them a lot of issues and it's kind of scary for the cycle of the team ultimately we've got these three rounds picked up we had a few strung together but the fact that it's also sort of similar to the way the first half went on vertigo where they got a couple rounds but couldn't find consistency to me it, it, it seems like they don't rightly know where those rounds are coming from does that make sense in in the way that it's like okay we've got a setup we've got an execute that works really well um, let's run that. We know that the percentages are pretty good on it. It more feels like, oh, someone's picked up a crazy 3K, and now we have a chance into the round, right? The the um, consistency factor comes from finding your best possible rounds and attacking them constantly, really. Ooh, big action in towards lower tunnels. CT push coming through. Finding two. Katzi, patience pays off, but maybe needs to be careful of the back end. Not going to be an exchange over there. So when the dust settles into a three on three. And this is clearly an attempt to make some noise on one side to kind of potentially fake it out a little bit because you can see the bombs moving over towards A. And because the hit has been B for quite a few rounds, MIBR have to play this carefully. So they're maintaining a split here, but that's going to immediately give it over that. Okay, here you go. I've spotted at least one uh, over towards A long. And again, still not over rotating, but with all of this utility coming through, now it's going to be painfully obvious. And unfortunately, with Katty having not gotten herself into position just yet, QSE could find themselves overrun. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if Babs finds a crazy headshot through the smoke, that could, oh, give them a chance. But boost results in a frag. But look where the bomb's gone. That's what I was making uh, the disappointed noise at. The bomb has flown off of the ledge here. Straight into the hands of the CTs. No need to panic. No need to get overzealous. Cathy, though, that, you know, unknown element comes in from behind and creates hey. the space, Lee. I'm gonna find the head of Arkinia, and now here we are. You know, again, it's a bit crazy and a little bit of luck involved, but QSC with a chance to start closing the gap again. I think that's a problem. Like, okay, it's good that they're winning rounds, but I think it's problematic that they are so chaotic, and it feels like a lot of it comes down to missed plays that you've been able to kind of take advantage of, or that the that MIBR didn't punish you explicitly for. You want to have these rounds being a little bit more clean. You want it to be clear that this was the plan we had and we executed it and it worked. It shouldn't be a case of we had this plan, it didn't work out, but we didn't get punished and then we turned it back, right? Um, so hopefully we start to see that look a little bit more clean. And actually, I, I love this. This super, super patient play here. They've done a little bit of conditioning with their slightly faster hits and they've also realized that trying to go through tunnel can be a little bit dangerous so for now 
they're just playing a more patient game. What they probably aren't aware of, though, is that they're running into a double AWP setup here. So wherever they run into, it's likely going to be a little bit of a shooting gallery. Yeah, this is a big problem with, you know, not being able to find that consistency is uh, as soon as you pick up a round, something new to deal with, right? Double <laughs> up setup, change in the overall setup. So we'll see. QSC once again, looking towards short. Um, something that they could really punish is the fact that MIBR uh, are very statically playing two on the B site itself, but they've not quite tapped into that just yet. It's going to be another attempting towards short. And we saw this round previously where they go for the CT drop, they go for the mid to B, and now all of a sudden, two players in on the B bomb site actually looks pretty good because you're not going to get as overwhelmed. Nice spin around from Arkinia on that double orb. Unfortunately, going to fall eventually. And I mean, the way that you maybe expect it to go, not a lot of time. One more frag in there could have uh, resulted in a nasty one, to be honest. Not going to be the case. Three versus three on the retake. It's a lot of space in the attack, though. Quick flank, very quick flank from Kizia here. Flash comes over the top to give us some space, but it's so tough to win these fights at the back of Plat, and it will just be down to little D. Ooh, okay, hello. I thought it was pretty much over, but the AWP nearly dropping the ball there. Anna X will manage to secure it. That was also like a weird round because this is one of the few rounds where MIBR leave mid completely open. Now they did obviously have um, uh, Arkenia watching with the AWP, but they force her off of her position. And once they've done that, it's free entry into the B site. And it's a little bit of a rotation from those players on A because they were deep A. So it's quite a bit of a rotation for them to start moving around and getting back into position. Again, a few missteps almost cost QSE the round, but they've actually been far better at stabilizing here than what we saw on Vertigo. And I, I'm really glad that we are getting to see that T side because it does look a bit more stable than what their CT side on Vertigo looked like. And they're slowly kind of getting themselves back into this. With this being an anti-eco, we're looking at a at an eight six half, and I mean that's not horrific. That's it's not the the massive buffer you would like to have going into the half, but it's far more workable than a thirteen two. Yeah, very true. And I mean the way that uh, just who's kind of been going um, in the current match, not ridiculously, but pretty heavily CT sided actually. So MIBR might be a bit disappointed. The the nine would be nice. But even with the buy into the next round, it's not going to be fantastic. They've lost that control of the site. We have a sneaky attempt at a flank here. And a possibility to maybe overwhelm the AWP. But in comes Lay, making it all good. And not losing a single player. So pretty solid stuff. Doesn't matter too much for the economy. But for a bit of confidence moving forwards, QSE uh, will be happy with how clean that is. Got to keep going. Got to get this next round as well, just to make sure that it's as clean as humanly possible and you give yourself as much wiggle room as you can. So now instead of the slightly slower style that we'd seen previously, we're seeing a metric ton of utility towards A and the bomb's chilling over towards B. Yeah, they picked up the pace into this one, QSC. Maybe a little uh, overconfident. However, Anna X, who, by the way, has been pretty outstanding with these solo plays, finds fly around the smoke into a five on four then. A low HP bar for Lay, certainly potential to battle back into this one, but looking good for QSC right now. Still playing this so patient. And again, I like that MIBR don't kind of overcommit. But you can see they've been somewhat starved for information and they kind of need to try and take some of that space with very little utility as well to do much of anything with. I mean, QSC still somewhat in the driving seat here. Obviously got that player advantage and a fairly clean route towards that A site. Let's see if they can capitalize on that and secure that last round. Nice one for one. Moving in towards A. Oh, Kizia, though, with the untraded frag in and above this smoke. Hera able to take out the B lurker. 
So now becoming a bit problematic. Little Z in from Gandalf, not mollied out initially. Will get traded, but it's a one versus three for Babs to contend with. You see here, trying to keep things together. Bomb goes down. They've given her a lot of space to get this bomb down onto the AK. Slow but sure. Keeping forwards. Unfortunately, kind of the wrong spot to be in. I think even if she finds that kill, it would have been the easy trade. We get the defuse here. MIBR will have a, a pretty comfortable lead. I think 9-6. It's not ideal. You maybe want at least the 10, maybe even an 11 here on Dust 2. But 9, they will take QSE a little more out of them, though. And that's what we like to see. We'll have to find out moving into half number two whether they can get the CT side rolling. So here we are, half number two, QSC having a bit more of an impact, to say the least. Not quite into the pistol just yet, but we will be shortly, and it gives us a little bit of time to uh, talk things over from that first half, I think, because um, much, much better showing, right? That consistency hit. T-side definitely looks a, a lot more comfortable, to be honest with you. And now yeah. we'll see, moving on to the CT side, this is where we had the issues, right? We'll see whether Dust2, whether... a bit more uh, confidence behind them makes a difference. 
I mean, hopefully, no, they didn't come into this half with the lead, but hopefully the fact that they've managed to string together quite a decent number of rounds in that first half will afford them, like you said, that little bit of confidence to keep going here on the CT side. Their CT on Vertigo looked a little messy, looked a little scrappy, looked a little uncertain. Hopefully we'll start to see them kind of lean into their strengths a little bit more here. Let's see, we've kind of left A relatively unguarded. They're still... Obviously very close for any necessary quick rotations, but with a, a push looking to come through a long and not a ton of information on the fact that that's what's happening, we could see those rotations come in a bit late. Getting their timings down really well here, though, on the, the QSC side of things. They have that boost mm -hmm. to see into lower tunnels, move away from it just as, yeah, you would expect players, if they are creeping, to start coming around. The corner of long. Flash goes in, and there was certainly opportunities for Anorex. Struggling here on this USP, and the Glock's up close. Looking good. Babs on the edge of the smoke has managed to find one, but that's the only frag so far for the CT end. Down to just two. Not looking too hot, to be honest with you. Trying to find a little bit of something, but I don't think it's quite going to happen. Yeah, I think that this was a fairly clinical attack, or... Um... First offensive round, I suppose, uh, for MIBR, you know. Just very quick and cleanly execute over onto the A site. Drop the smokes to drop the line of sight. And, I mean, the rotations were something that I'd been a little bit worried about with the uh, QSE. I thought that they might not be able to make it in time, especially if it's a full rush towards A. And it was literally the, the same thing that I said on Vertigo, in fact, on the very first pistol round where MIBR, everybody just rushes straight onto B. And the uh, QSE have to be fairly split across the map. They can't really shut down one side. They can't really gamble stack it because to have to rotate all the way across if you're wrong is not ideal. So that definitely favors MIBR in the fact that they do run a very, very aggressive first pistol round. But now, you know, we, we head in onto the second round and again, we're seeing them really invest into it, putting a lot of cash behind it again they're looking to make this a fairly quick and clean second half we'll see if qse allows that given the fact that they're still still on the usp is still with uh, very little to work with it seems unlikely that they'll be able to kind of clutch out this one yeah it's, it's interesting though because this is a um kind of deviation away from what we usually see there are uh, a couple teams that experiment with this where you eco out this second round go for an early rifle buy uh, on the CT side, right? It, on the T side, it's a bit more prominent um, to do that, especially if you don't get the bomb plant down in your pistol and then, you know, lose said pistol. But on the CT side, I don't know. It, it, sometimes it can work. You've got to have an idea because you're going to lack some utility, probably not able to get an AWP out, which is the case here. So you have to have a bit of an idea of what you want to do with this. And, and just to... You know, that long area to contest it, you need a lot of utility. It looks like they're actually kind of going that way. So I, I think that for me, um, it becomes a bit problematic if, if they're not able to take clean control of long here. However, no real contest from MIBR. But I do like that they're taking better map control than what we saw from QSE. QSE, we spoke about their hesitance and their... Um slower plays, but they, they didn't really take control of any of the areas. And, and this is what MIBR seem to be doing quite well here. They've pushed very far up into mid, and they're trying to take control of as much of the space as possible, not just um, with their bodies, but also with a lot of that utility as well, giving themselves a chance to start to rotate and hopefully starve off uh, some of the rotations from QSE, stop them from being able to push back. Yeah, it's, it's something that MIBR might struggle to kind of deal with here as well. Not sure how to approach things. Uh, what has happened there? Uh, I think Oopsie. both players completely blinded. A little bit of a team flash, unfortunately, onto Kizia. Will make life very, very awkward indeed. Great little molly. Bit more spam through that smoke. But not going to follow up on it. Babs gets away with her life just about. And they are very ready for this attack to come in through the smoke. Never the move. And well, yeah, bloodbath in favor of QSE quite heavily. Fly the only one left, damage dished out. 
but of course five kills to fly not gonna happen taken down through the smoking qsc flawless first rifle that is huge yeah i, I definitely want to see more of that and i think that that is the uh slight issue with the slower push so they take the early map control mibr and i love that i love that they do that but then we talk about how QSE tended to stall out a little bit, and they kind of did that as well, where they, they take the map control and then they're like, okay, now what? And we see some of that util come out. And again, it's a, it's a game of information. It's a game of finding out where QSE are, where they're holstered up, where can you find an avenue to push through to gain space. But they take a little bit long to make that happen. And QSE are able to kind of pincer in around them. And once they start moving towards the B site, they're essentially corralled. And yeah, just completely mowed down. So now we start to see them again back down onto more or less of an eco. Moving towards the A site and more of the mowing. Maybe to be expected here with the weaponry that we have out on that T side of things. But I don't know. One for one. Retrieve this rifle. Get it into the hands of uh, someone with armor. Error does indeed have that armor. So we'll see. They have a slight bit of utility to get some pressure on towards a FAMAS retrieved though as said Ooh, wildly through the smoke goes on our X trying to maybe create a little bit of space for the rest of the squad to work around meanwhile players being boosted up snuck in round the smokes it's all a bit chaotic on towards a here three on two and MIBR if they can convert this it would be huge lay left very low from these earlier exchanges so really not looking too good here maybe going to try and go for a bit of a boost up and you know keeping keeping things together but it, it really is not looking too hot however when the dust settles they're able to make their way around and i think mibr maybe slightly overzealous with some of the peaks there getting ahead of themselves we we touched on this before right sam where it's like sometimes you have to look it around you got to say this is actually very winnable and yeah. and i don't think that they quite had that conversation with themselves <laughs> Hopefully for the next. Hopefully for the next. I mean, QSC, I do like that this has been a little bit more back and forth. I love a little bit of tug and war. Uh, ooh, okay, that's a nice shot. Doesn't quite get the job done. But it does make a big difference here. And I think for QSC, so obviously they don't have an AWP of their own on the field here. They're going to have to play this a little bit more carefully. Really rely on that util. Make sure that they're not giving themselves into little Z's. Sightlines, because I mean, we've we've seen time and again how devastatingly good she is with that, and I mean, for her to have gotten that opening bit of burst damage so early on, and okay, it's fairly standard. You check double doors, see if you can get a pick as someone runs on the cross. But either way, you know, solid. Get a player really low, and that already starts to give you an advantage that you can try to press on. Minute left on the clock here. MIBI, I think they know how important this one is, right? If if it's a clean win, especially from QSC, real potential to close that gap. So they have to find a way in and playing it safe. Unconfirmed damage, I would say, onto Katty. Not quite aware of the fact that you know she is indeed low, but we know that we know that they have a slight upper hand here. And maybe looking to borrow those trickle smokes. Oh, this is dangerous though. Two moving out towards long. There's resistance here. I don't think that the utility is going to be enough to distract everybody away from it. So a really, really tough one, right? You've got to rely on the individuals because there's not as much support for them at the moment. But there it is. Kizzy, you're in from long. It all works out at least for now three on three with no cross smokes kizzy is probably stuck towards long for a while bomb goes down it's available once again here for the ct side of things that's it so bullets to eyeballs is what they're after and hera reads in how many times have we seen that boost from both sides right on the retakes pretty reliable but there's no smoke in the way it's easy to work around the corner hera beautiful stuff big 3k coming in what makes me so sad about that was that QSC, so they play relatively patient. And in the meantime, Fly is busy working her way up through mid towards double doors. And she doesn't check the left flank. 
So as she pushes through, because obviously she's trying to flank into A, and she gets taken down. And that's a huge opener for QSC on that defense. But then they get in onto the site, and it all just kind of falls apart. And that's been so rough. Again, we talk about those mid-round adaptations. And once the MIBR were on the site and had laid down all of those smokes, it's so difficult for QSC to get back into it. They've made it a very, very rough part here because as we find ourselves at 12 to 8, and with a two-player advantage for MIBR, not looking good. Bob's has recovered an AK, though. Trying to find a cheeky heady, but that stairs angle, quite rough to peek, quite rough to work with. Might as well go for it. Again, you're in one of these scenarios where you are buying in the next round. The one-tap potential of the AK is nice, but you never know. Now you've got two, see? So, eh, only for a split second. But yeah. I think as that one comes in, all sort of hope fades away. Little Z so going to find the final frag, and Kizia was in behind if needed. MIBR really starting to run away with things now. QSE, you know, you're falling foul to that sixth enemy that's ever present the economy especially on that mm -hmm. ct side it's very rough at least they're still in it in this round somewhat of course they've had to sacrifice a little bit of the armor that makes it that little bit more tough as well they force babs off of position but not able to capitalize on it oh we talk about these shooting galleries and it's i don't know call the gardener it's mowing day Indeed. Little Z going to miss out on maybe uh, one of the easier shots, unfortunately. And that does mean that the bomb firmly in the hands of the CT side. So QSC have to capitalize on this, right? This is a very, very scary scenario that they are finding themselves in. If well, Even if they do win this one, you know, there's a lot of work to be done, right? The, the money uh, running low for, for MIBR, but we'll see. Either way, four versus two. It becomes primarily doing some damage. Then maybe if you manage to get around these three players working the round itself. Doesn't look too doable. Molly splits them up. Really good timing on that. And Katty in from the backside. Will secure all four alive, right? Round number nine coming in, yes. But for that money that we've talked about, super important that they get that with only losing one. I just love how the entirety of that fight happens in long. And I was a little concerned because I mean, we saw Babs kind of pushing out. She gets a little bit, uh, she gets pushed off of her position a little bit and forced down and is taken out very early on. And it's like, oh, well, Made in Brazil yeah, might just come out on top of this one. But QAC, because they'd sent so many of their players down, they kind of catch MIBR off guard. They set up some really good crossfires into that. And they secure themselves yet another round in a situation where I wasn't too sure they were going to actually be able to make that one happen. Now, it's MIBR who seem to be at the mercy of the economy. Yes, they're okay. They do still have three AKs, but the Deagle on top of that and knowing that they're running into an AWP as well, those decisions become so much harder to commit to and to execute on. And now we see that same thing that we've seen time and again from both of these teams, really. The start to the round... A player dies, and now we stall out. What happens now? What happens next? What is the next move? They're looking for it. Flash over the top. And X not to be blinded at all. Oh, was in the right spot, but could not capitalize. Seeing to be spotted out towards Goose here as well. Another kill uh, on Babs coming through. That's towards Long. So this Goose player really going to have to stand strong. Can't find anything. They play it very well. Super patient. You know, don't overface. Let everybody move around. So at the very least, we can trade in. And now four on two. It, it feels like maybe to save the game here, not quite out of control just yet. But with dropping this one, it might get there. And they're at that crossroads. Do we go for it? Do we save? Nothing presenting itself around the corner. So they will move to save. Mm. Try and get something going in the next round. Which I think will be doable. Babs and Anorex have got a decent amount of money here. Um, possibly a drop of some kind from Lay for Insane. So there's, there's, a, there's a chance that they can mm. recover back quickly. What's been interesting to note is how seldom we see saves. And it was something that I'd noted yesterday as well uh, in the, the Fury W7M game. 
And it was one of my big gripes with W7M where so many rounds where they could have held on to a little bit more of that firepower and opted to go for an attempt at exit frags. And it, it didn't really work out. So it's nice to see that from time to time we are getting those saves out. You gotta kind of wonder if maybe a little bit more often you might find yourselves in slightly more favorable positions, especially on a map like this, which has been fairly back and forth. On a map like Vertigo, I can almost start to understand why you kind of don't think it's going to amount to terribly much. But on a map like this one, where it's so much more contested, where you can make so much more happen, glad to see that we saw that in the previous round. Beautiful stuff here from Cassie to oh. find two in and around the barrels, playing the angle perfectly. Will eventually go down, but surely has done enough. And indeed, now just terror for a couple gonna get them so on plan should be doable but somewhat panicked you know 1v4 we saw 1v5 so you know 1v4 should be easy plenty of time as well actually to rotate back towards a so it gets it uh, kind of interesting i don't know i don't know a bomb plan for sure i think is gonna happen and then the rest is on hera really it seems like one of those moments where the benny hill music should be playing yeah, just as they're kind of pushing into B as well. It's not even like they're, they're sat in the middle <laughs> holding for the cross here that would give the game away. Oh, selling it. Oh, I like it. Yeah, I mean, you know, Xbox smoke, it, it, it covers the cross. It, it delays a bit of information if they are indeed in at mid. It still, to me, maybe gives the game away that you go in A. So um, maybe, uh, you know, a little bit annoying on the side there of QSE that they are very, very, very flat-footed. That's going to buy a lot of time. You can see 10 to 15 already gone. Coming in together, though, and they are going to meet on short. So here we go. Hera can't find the first pad. All that to just get clapped immediately, of course, the way that it goes. But... For the long term, getting that bomb down is actually pretty important for this mm -hmm. uh, next round on the MIBR side. Yeah, I think that having that extra little bit of cash will always make quite a bit of a difference, especially because MIBR can't really afford to lose a ton of rounds here. Because obviously, if, if they win here, they get themselves up to match point and they're looking pretty good going forward. If they lose this round, economy is a little messy. QSE starting to build up quite a bit. Obviously, that'll get them onto 11 points, and they start to break down MIBR quite a lot. So this is a really important round, I think, on a, on a lot of different levels. Um, not just because of the match point, but because of how it's going to affect the economy long-term for both of these teams. So neither one really wants to give up much of anything. We'll see how it actually does play out, because again, QSE... This time, looking for a little bit more of that map control, a lot of control towards A, a little bit of posturing towards mid. This bomb kind of hovering in the in the tunnels at the moment. It's looking like it might just be that B hit. Yeah, they're they're unsure, right? Playing the field at the moment. Oh, lay so close. Can see the smoke's coming over. Just spot the tip of the head, although. Blends in with the wall, so did she? Hiding away, beautifully set up here between her and Babs. And that's the round. Goodness me, Catty as well from just in front of the tunnel, able to find one of her own. So, little Z, only one left. And uh, no bomb this time, so no Benny Hill theme, no crazy <laughs> rotations. It's, it's a bit more somber, I think, this time. Degree of inevitability. Ooh. Ooh. Oh! Oh, can't connect. It's close, and oh. who's ever going to expect that angle? So, QSE closing the gap, and this time, no bomb plant breaks the economy. Oh, yeah. And holding on to that AWP would have really helped. Well, maybe not that much, but it would have been nice just to have some kind of firepower coming into this next one. Because right now, I mean, they have... They got nada. Uh, it's... Wow. It's, it's really rough out here. And of course, even with a Lost Streak bonus coming into the next round, it's still not going to be ideal. It'd be relatively okay. The QSE obviously looking to try and solidify this lead. This is going to be a good start to make that happen. Just packing around, you know, goon squadron trying to find 
someone vulnerable. Not going to happen, though, I would imagine. Ooh. Okay. That's, that's illegal. There you go. Yeah, I mean, keeping it together, keeping it together. That, that FAMAS tearing through the unarmored opponents. Lovely stuff. Eco warriors. That's that's what we call them <laughs> when they pull out plays like that. All right. So what is the plan here? They might be are at least able to fully kit themselves out, more or less. So there's some firepower, and of course a ton of utility here. But again, I kind of mentioned the the stakes in terms of economy in the previous round. So this is a really important one for MIBR to win. If they lose this one, the snowball potential for QSE is massive. And, I mean, given how Vertigo went, I think you and I both kind of thought coming into this, eh, it's probably going to be a bit of a wash. This has been really good from QSE to just maintain the pressure as well as they have been to keep themselves in this for so long. Kind of hoping they do come out on top of this one. I'd like to see what happens on, on Mirage, given how, you know, Vertigo and Dust2 have been... Pretty much night and day. Mm. Smoke coming in. Spam from Babs. Doesn't land. Uh, gives a small amount of pressure. The short push, short control that that T side so desires comes nice and easy. They've responded by pushing deeper in towards long. One player in on the lurk. Bit of a bigger fan of this than two. Coming from long because your frontal attack will look a bit better. Mm -hmm. But really winding the clock down on this one now. We'll we'll see. There's no orb to go over the top of these smokes, so to speak. Clean flashes could make it doable. Babs with a nice smoke though, a counter to make life awkward. Molly comes in. Doesn't quite reach though. They've not got that second one in to help out. And Babs still sticking around. Only good for the one. Slight over swing, and it was all a bait in towards long as well. Is he going down? Bomb plant coming in. Lay with the aggressive peak here on this badass. And it comes up true Ooh. for two. And X finding the final. And that'll be the 13th. This gets worrisome now for MIBR. Lay a little bit of a FAMAF warrior, I'll be honest. Good grief. Impressive stuff, I think, from QSE. Doing so much better than what we'd anticipated. And, well, we, we laid the stakes down as we came into this round. It was an important one for MIBR to come out on top of. And, well, there you go. We got the, the match pause coming out to really solidify uh, that this is important and that MIBR are a little bit nervous. Definitely, I'd say. Knowing that QSE have managed to string together so many rounds and get themselves so close to that match point position. And if QSE can... can not concede a round and keep going, then they've taken OT off the table. So if they just get the next couple of rounds, they secure it. It would be, I think, a little bit more stressful if, if, if it, MIBR were on 15, not just because it's match point, but because you, you still have the kind of dread of a potential OT looming over you. But in this scenario, QAC have a chance to actually cleanly take this without having to get to that OT position. But hopefully they don't kind of get overconfident, right? Don't overcommit yourself and, and make massive mistakes here. You don't want to just hand this map over to MIBR when you've given yourselves, when you've fought for such a strong advantage. What is the game plan here then with the uh, slight bit of utility we have alongside these pistols? Mid to be smokes with an interesting addition. I think that might have failed. Spam coming in. Solidly able to find one. Drops the bomb. They are going to commit. Go and be. Oh, they're set up so well though once again, right? And... Not everyone's together on the T side, taking a bit of freedom as you do on these half buys. And uh, it's actually the A bomb side that's open, but can they get away from the B players that are now hunting them? <laughs> Not all, but the bomb does. And up by a short, just about, will be a plant. So helps into the next round. Arkinia, got to be careful. Long work. Oh, no. Oh, no. This could be huge, to be honest. A fluff spray down really makes all the difference, to be honest, Arkinia. 
you know, another chance at it. AK in hand. And little Z, tough on the HP, but certainly could play some nice extra angles. Able to find one. Can you? Can't deliver, though. And that's 14-14. It's costly. They can see the bomb plan, but at the very least, they're keeping them together. Well played there for uh, Insane FPS to actually win out that long-range battle. It was pretty important. Okay, you do still have some reinforcements, but you want to try and isolate. As, as MIB are in that situation, you want to try and isolate if you can. You don't want to get swung on, but unfortunately, they're not able to win out on the isolation duel. MRBR are still all right in this one. Still have a lot to use. Pulling out that AWP once again. Oh, does it connect that time? Which is pretty unfortunate. Would have liked to have done a little bit of chip damage there. And this is... We keep talking about these important rounds. And as we get closer and closer to match point, just every single round becomes a bit of a money round. A bit of a round that you can't really afford to lose and we start to see the players become that much more patient from both of these teams the closer and closer we climb neither of them want to go for anything rushed you don't see super proactivity from qse yes they do still push out quite deep down long but they're not pushing out super aggressively super unnecessarily and mibr also you know when we see them commit they commit but they don't commit until they're a hundred percent certain that they can push in Neither of these teams wants to make even the smallest mistake that could be pushed on. Trickle smokes, Molly in, dropped towards CT, heard by Babs. Gapping it as well to work with, but the info is LA, able to find the frag. And they wanted to go B off the back of that, but the bomb is kind of trapped in. Arkinia has continued the mission on towards A. Oh, and just crept through. Insane was watching the corner. And then looked away, not quite able to capitalize, but they've gained control of the A-bomb site at the very least. They're all split, fights all over the shop about to commence, and it looks pretty good for the CT side, to be honest with you. Yeah, flanking from Palm Tree. So just two remaining against the five here. We'll see, Artinia, aggressive spot, can't find a frag. Lil Z, another attempt at a one versus five, perhaps. Harder one to pull off. Oh no. Oh no, no not again. No, no. way. Oh. This time oh. we'll miss the final shot. The all important shot. That again would have been quite something. But not able to get it done. So here we are. Match point for QSE to take us to a third. My heart couldn't take that. Good grief. I mean, look, we, we knew that th th she was insane coming into this, but that's just... If she did that twice, I suppose to an extent three times, I think there was a similar round as well at another point. I mean, it's crazy the clutch potential that she has. And MIBR really struggling here. I think we, we talk about how important momentum is. So we, we looked at Vertigo and we saw a massive runaway for MIBR and QSE struggled a lot. A lot of footfalls there and a lot of it came down to clearly being in that headspace of, well, this is basically over. This time, however, they've realized that they have a really good shot at this and they've maintained pace and precision and accuracy to the very best of their ability and it's paid off so well. You can see the little misplays that teams make when they know they're on the back foot haven't come out as strongly here. We find ourselves here on this match point and QSE, well, looking pretty good for a win here to take us to map three. Long approach this time instead. MIBR, it, it generally gives you a bit of a one track if they want to go for it, got the AWP in towards Pit. It was uh, not a fantastic flashbang, but I suppose insane as well. Holding a closer angle than maybe they would expect, right? Um, dangerous spot for the AWP in and of itself as well to move away here. But a lot of pressure with that AWP in Pit. Oh, yeah. this is the big play, isn't it? Yeah, Anna X on the backside. Going to be watched for. Maybe she wins the fight and that changes things. Molly lineup coming out. Meanwhile, at the front side, we've got the big attack coming in. Flashes over the top. Insane holding from Gandalf. 
Anorex got to clear all those angles and will indeed find Hera now. Problematic on the backside bomb. Will make its way in towards the site. Should just about be able to get it down here. Uh, players burning alive. It's a mess. <laughs> it is a mess right now. 4v4 for the game. USC trying to hold on to the series. Flag forced out. Wins the fight, but traded. Three versus three. And they drop the long presence. The bomb is planted for little Z. So this is really going to make the difference for me. Arkinia trying to get the pre-fire in here. Does get overwhelmed. Kazinia in a car though, looking good. And there it is, tap on the bomb. Little Z finds it. And that indeed will be the overtime. We're going to take a quick break before we get into it, but you don't want to miss the end of this one. Cause I was born in this world to one day lead it It's in my 
my soul that I hustle and get what is mine. Won't sell my soul, never buckle about a mankind. See, I was told that it was tough, but I promised to fly. I never fold like some clothes, it's victory time. I got the vision to top all my competition. I stand tall like a building, I pull up to handle the business. My eyes on that prize, no time for hoping and wishing. I'm scoping down on that line to get everything missing. Listen, uh-uh, I'm remarkable in the baddest. I'm headed right toward the future, I'm starting now with the second. I pit my grind and drive and leave it on automatic. Leave my headers behind, they start way back in traffic. Hey! I'ma grind till I get it, day and night till I'm winning. Waste no time, have no business. Watch me push it to the limit. I'ma grind till I get it, day and night till I'm winning. Waste no time, have no business. Watch me push it to the limit. I'ma grind till I get it, day and night till I'm winning. Waste no time, have no business. Watch me push it to the limit. I'ma grind till I get it, day and night till I'm winning. Waste no time, have no business. Watch me push it to the limit. first overtime of many or will it all be decided here i guess that's uh, the big question as we turn over the hour we'll see of course uh yeah just tracking there and, and making sure we sort of had our facts right 49 it was for mibr and qsc are able to pull it back but lil z's got uh, a few plans here moving into the first bout of overtime that's the first time we've seen that i mean maybe been looking for it for quite a while however mm -hmm. heavy long presence here from the ct side trying to regain a bit of something and actually it comes over at b and then fly is forced out so somehow cts have got the advantage that's a bit weird Get that first opening kill, but of course the first opening kill's over in mid, and like you said, such a strong presence over towards long, which QSE have been doing for a lot of these rounds. I mean, they know what they do on A long, so they're definitely not going to allow MIBR to do the same thing, so they hold that heavy presence, and now MIBR go B. Indeed. Kizia, oh, going to find one. However, Lay lets him pass. Only good for the one, though. It's Lil Z with the quick trade. That could make all the difference. Maybe, you know, you got to strike earlier than that. On plant, coming in, Anna X trying to find the angle here. Bit of pre-fire, but doesn't quite land. And breaking through an AWP can be pretty tough. However, she decides to swap away from it. Beneath window is Hera. Oh man, it's all on a bit of a knife edge here in the first round of overtime. Really biding their time on this QSE side of things. Slow but sure, setting themselves up, flying in to facilitate the trade, but... Uh, maybe for the wrong side, Lil Z finds a quick return frag and, of course, that all-important 16th. Maybe a little later than they would have liked, but it's that sigh of relief, you know, getting the first mm -hmm. round of overtime. It always is. That rotation from Insane from the A site takes an eternity, and you can't push out on your own when you're trying to hold down the B site, so you have to wait for that rotation to come in. It takes so long... And, all right, well, this is not taking long at all. Good grief. Uh, yeah, moving a bit quick. Out long. 
When the dust settles, 2v1. What a weird okay. play. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you got to just fly in, especially, I suppose, you find that, that first uh, round of the overtime. Just go for it. I think it's just weird because QSC have been heavily stacking players on a long for so many rounds. So you're kind of thinking, okay, well, you're expecting it so you could throw out some util and then hopefully push them off of their angles, but they hold their ground. And as you funnel through, and let's face it, that choke is tiny. So as you funnel through, they just kind of pre-fire it a little bit and yeah, just mow straight down. Okay, it trades somewhat, but now little Z is the only one left alive. And QSD don't really have to do terribly much here. Lil Z has to, if she wants to get the plant, she has to move towards site. So they just have to kind of wait it out, I guess. But I mean, we've seen what she can do in an op in these situations, so. It's kind of my thinking too. Oh, they are going to cross cool. underneath her though. Yeah. Losing the FOV, of course, on that scope. Banking mm -hmm. on a short play and uh, somewhat of an off angle. Not the way it goes. So they're happy to concede a bomb plant. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think... That can go south quite quickly um, if they were spotted, if they were heard, given a bit too much space across. But not going to be the case, right? So it, mm. it works and we don't have to do too much results-based analysis, right? <laughs> um, QSC, however, even in it up and quickly is very important for them, I think. Ooh. Missed shot could have been the absolute opening. Instead, now going to get smoked off from every angle. Still going to hold it, though. See if somebody does try to aggress in through mid, because there is a little bit of pressure coming through here. So that's actually going to force her off the angle. And this, I think, works out pretty heavily in MIBR's favor. Okay, the A site is still somewhat stacked. They've given themselves a little bit of free roam here in mid to make the decision as to you know where the heck they're going to go. Nade does a disappointing amount of damage. It felt <laughs> like it was in the perfect spot in between three players. And it doesn't do enough. They're always disappointing, to be honest. Eh, maybe not always, but most of the time. Either way, That's what she Trickle said. Smokes. <laughs> Trickle Smokes going in towards the A-bomb site here. Babs going to give all the position up. Annex, I think, trying to go for a flash over the top. So it's not the end of the world, but does misjudge it slightly so it won't hit the mark. Five on five post plant here. Slowly but surely the B players are making their way around. This is going to be tough. With with no presence in a short from the CT end, I think this is going to be really tough. Maybe the smoke splits them up and that's enough, but you got to capitalize on X. Slightly fluffing it up, sets up Arkinia. But as you see, flying from long is another thing to deal with. And it comes at the perfect time. Hera can push through the molly, pre-fire him from fly. She and Hera hold it down. And that, for me, is a beautiful post plant there from MIBR. Deserved 17th coming in. Yeah, I loved how they approach that. So they force the AWP out of mid and they give themselves some space to move in towards A. And QSC hadn't taken that full massive A control that they usually do. So that space is fairly easy for MIBR to take control of. And once they've done that, I mean, they've set up these massive long range angles and it, it's too difficult. They make it damn near impossible for QSE to retake, especially when you see the direction that they have to retake in from, coming in from below there with so little util to actually prop themselves forward at just a really, really good round. One thing I will uh, shout out here in general, 12.5k in the overtime. Big fan of that. 16k, too much. You don't get punished for like a double up setup. <laughs> 10k, too little. You know, especially on that CT side. So 12.5 is a nice balance. We hit it at some point last year. I think some, uh, I think it might be Blast actually uh, used it first. And uh, I'm glad that we get to see it here. So it, it does mean we have, yes, room for experimentation, but also not as punishing as that 10k. I like that MIBR are going for a heavier positioning down A long as well. 
potentially expecting QSE to posture for that A rush that they have been so fond of previously. But they've had a pretty healthy dose of swapping between A and B. I think the big thing that I've complained about has been their lack of map control. And with Lei pushing out here, they're seeming to want to rectify that somewhat. I'm glad to see some of those adaptations coming out. Let's see if they can follow up on that. Because they've laid down quite a lot of utility towards mid here. But again, just made in Brazil, super patient, not pulling the trigger unnecessarily. Yeah, it's really cool to see that we've got, you know, some some learned behaviors swapping sides. Little Zito taking an angle she hadn't really played in regulation. Can't quite capitalize, but at the same time, still alive and gathered a bit of information. Nice nade comes in. Two set up here for fly. See what they can find. Fly and Kizia. Oh, I mean, I think they're kind of stealing this. The bomb is going down, but there's still a lot of pressure coming in. And there it is. The trade off of each other. Neither of them going down as well. It's massive. Yes, bomb's been planted. Doesn't really matter in overtime, you know. Four on two. Looking very, very good here for MIBR. Just the one remaining. Lay. I feel has to hold this, but can't get anything done. MIBR with a fantastic opening CT side round. And of course, now they've got two rounds to give it a go with. And at the very least, they'll stay alive here on Dust 2, right? So they have the upper hand massively. And, and QSE, that's our first, you know, T-side round we see from them here. There's not an awful lot. They just walk straight into the trap. Can't really, you know, uh, convince us of, of being competitive. I think this is MIBR also just kind of trying to leverage a lot of QSE's uncertainty on their T-sides. I mean, we mentioned how good... QSE's T-side looked in comparison to the CT side. But MIBR, I mean, they play that so patiently and carefully. They don't give away anything unnecessarily. And they kind of pounce towards the end of the round there. It's a perfect execution. Now, QSE have to really consider how they're going to take these next few rounds. And taking all of that damage so early on, not ideal. I have to play that a little bit more carefully because that also gives away a ton of information over to MIBR, who now realize, well, everybody's kind of posturing around mid. I mean, you can see so much of their attention is focused in. Yeah, they'll send one player towards a long, just to see, check out, scope out the scene. But there's, it's, it's become quite evident that there's a heavy presence for mid to be. So unlikely that it's going to be the A hit. Unless they just change direction, which I suppose is also fair. <laughs> mm. you got work to do, though, again. We're, we're set up and ready. Lil Z was here last time, so might get flashed off. It is, of course, oh, Kizia on the right-hand angle here. That's the one that's maybe not expected. And there it is. It's all coming together nicely. Lil Z. Okay, not going to go through it. Just laying down the utility. They will recover the bomb back. Maybe going to try and go through the smoke themselves. But it's falling apart, right? The, the B lurk gets taken down. Katty hoping. She loves the lurk on that T side. Hoping that, the, you know, they're... Maybe a little sleeping on B, not going to happen. MIBR keeping it together, whereas QSE, it looks like the fatigue hitting them somewhat. And uh, really not looking good here. Low HP on Anorex, going to fall. And that will indeed be the finish coming through. It takes them the overtime. Certainly a lot more work than Vertigo. But MIBR, the victors of the series, as well as that grueling dust two with the 2-1.